Elementary Market Leader, Course Book, 3rd Edition, by David Cotton, David Falvey, and Simon Kent. Published by Pearson. Unit 1. Introductions. Track 1. Hi, you must be Charles. That's right, yes. Sorry I'm late. There was a delay with the flight. Welcome to Germany. I'm Emma. Emma Schneider, from Habermus in Hamburg. Oh, Emma, nice to meet you at last. I've heard so much about you. Let me help you with your bag. Unit 1. Introductions. Track 2. Peyton Electronics, good morning. How can I help you? Good morning. My name is Shi Jiabao. I'd like to speak to the marketing manager, please. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Could you say it again? Mr. Shi Jiabao. Just one moment, please, Mr. Shi. I'll connect you. Unit 1. Introductions. Track 3. Excuse me. I'm looking for room 205. That's for the talk about investing in China, isn't it? I'm going there myself, so let's go together. Great. My name's Akim, by the way. Akim Anikov from Astena Consulting. Nice to meet you. I'm Harry. Unit 1. Introductions. Track 4. Good afternoon. Are you Mrs. Davison? Yes, that's right. How do you do? I'm Nuria Souza from RTA Seguros. Pleased to meet you, Nuria. Did you have a nice trip? I think you need to check in at reception. Let me show you. Thank you. Unit 1. Introductions. Track 5. A. H. J. K. B. C. D. E. G. P. T. V. F. L. M. N. S. X. Z. I. Y. O. Q. U. W. R. Unit 1. Introductions. Track 6. 1. Ms. Schneider's first name is Emma. That's E double M A. 2. Shi Jia Bao is visiting Peyton Electronics. Peyton is spelt P A Y T O N. 3. He's Akim. And his surname's Anikov. I'll spell it for you. A N Y U K O V. Four. Nuria Souza is talking to Mrs. Davison. That's D A V I E S O. N. Nuria's email address is sosa at rtas.com.ar Unit 1. Introductions. Track 7. Brazil. Brazilian. Germany. German India Indian Mexico Mexican Italy Italian 
Russia, Russian. Korea, Korean. Japan, Japanese. China, Chinese. Kuwait, Kuwaiti. Oman, Omani. Poland, Polish. Spain, Spanish. Sweden, Swedish. Turkey, Turkish. France, French. Greece, Greek. The UK, British. The USA, American. Unit One, Introductions, Track Eight. Can you introduce yourself? My name is Jeremy Keeley. I live in a small city in England, near London, called St Albans. I have three teenage children, and I run my own small business, which uh, works for organisations across the UK and in Europe, where I help leaders to make decisions together and to improve the quality of their leadership. Do you always shake hands when you meet someone? I like to shake hands. I like people to feel welcome, to feel important, to feel valued. So yes. Unit one, introductions, track nine. What do you say when you meet a new business contact? I usually say hello. How are you? Where do you come from? What do you do? I usually find out what's important to them, why they're there. I usually wait until they've asked me a question before I talk too much about myself. When do you exchange business cards? I usually wait until the person I'm meeting offers me a business card before I offer them mine. So we'll exchange them at that point. Unit One, Introductions, Track Ten. My name's Marie Stella. I'm Brazilian, and I'm from Sao Paulo. I'm a research analyst for an investment bank in New York. I'm married with two children, a boy and a girl. They're at high school in Scarsdale. My husband's American, and he's a doctor. My sister's in New York too. She's a student at Columbia University. We're all interested in sports and movies. My son's a good tennis player. Unit One, Introductions, Track Eleven, Extract One. Hi, I'm Pierre. I'm from Switzerland. I work for Foster Wheeler, an international engineering company. I'm an engineer. The company's head office is in Geneva, but I work in the Singapore office. My wife's from Singapore, and she's an IT consultant. Track twelve, extract two. My name's Gustavo. I'm from Argentina. I work for the United Nations. I'm a lawyer, and I work in New York. It's a great place. My girlfriend's from New York. She's a journalist for the New York Times. Track thirteen, extract three. I'm Sylvia and I'm an architect. I have my own company. It's small, just six people. The office is in Rome, but I'm not from Rome. I'm from Sicily. My family lives in Palermo. Franco. That's my husband. He's a house husband at the moment. He looks after our three children. Unit one, introductions, track fourteen, conversation one. 
Hello, Jim. This is our new intern, Paula Atkins. Nice to meet you, Paula. I'm Jim Davis. I work in sales. Pleased to meet you, Jim. How long will you be with us? About three months, maybe longer. Okay, Jim. See you later. Bye, Paula. Enjoy your visit. Now, Paula, how about a drink? Tea or coffee? Track 15. Conversation 2. Good morning. My name's Lucy Collins. I'm a finance director. I work for a supermarket group. Hello. I'm Jenny Bradshaw. I'm a director of public relations. I work for a big media company. How do you do? Nice to meet you. Oh, let me introduce you to my colleague, Jonathan Ross. He's my assistant. Pleased to meet you, Jenny. Where are you from, Jenny? I'm from New York. I'm here to attend a conference. How about you two? We're from Manchester. We're here to visit head office. Track 16. Conversation 3. Hi, I'm Jeff. I'm in sales. Hi, Jeff. I'm Susan. I work in human resources. How are things going in your department? Pretty good. I enjoy my work. My colleagues are really nice, and I like my boss. Her name's Judy Barlow. Do you know her? Yes, she's nice. My boss is Richard Mason. He's not very friendly. But he's a good manager. Well, that's the most important thing. Okay, what are you having for lunch? I think I'll have a salad. <sighs> that's what I usually have for lunch here. Unit 2. Work and Leisure. Track 17. Person 1. Well, I'm a product manager, and what's important for me is a high salary, long holidays, and helpful colleagues. I only have two of these in my present job. Track 18. Person 2. I want to be a salesman, so what's important for me is a company car, parking facilities, and a mobile phone. Track 19. Person 3. I'm an accountant. What's important for me is a friendly boss, travel opportunities, oh, and job security. Track 20. Person 4. Fast promotion, flexible hours, and some sports facilities are what's important for me. I work in customer service. Unit 2. Work and Leisure. Track 21. 1. At night. 2. In the autumn. 3. On the 15th of February. 4. On Thursday. 5. In the afternoon. 6. On Tuesday evening. 7. In June. 8. At New Year. On New Year. 9. At the weekend. On the weekend. Unit 2. Work and Leisure. Track 22. Can you describe a typical working day? Well, what I enjoy the most about the work that I do is that there is no such thing as a typical day. I work for different clients on different projects. And when the client needs me for something, I have to be ready to respond. So I can be in meetings, I can be running a workshop or a discussion, 
or quite often I can be in my own office in front of a computer screen or on the phone. Unit 2. Work and Leisure. Track 23. Do you have enough time for leisure? Well, some weeks I do work very long hours and I also have teenage children. The combination of those two things does sometimes make it difficult to find enough time for leisure for myself. But to answer your question, even so, yes, I think I do have enough time for leisure. Unit 2. Work and Leisure. Track 24. What do you like doing to relax? At the weekends, I spend a lot of my time reading the newspaper. I catch up on the news from the previous week. And also, I try to go out running. Now, running may not sound like something that is very relaxing, but I think that it's very important to get outside, into the fresh air, and see the countryside. So that's why I run. Unit 2. Work and Leisure. Track 25. Interview 1. So, Mark, you work for a fashion company in Milan. Tell me about your working life. What do you do when you get to work? First, I say hello to all my colleagues, and then I check my email. Where do you have lunch? We have a long lunch break. I sometimes go home for lunch because it's close to work. The other days, I have lunch with colleagues in a restaurant. How much do you travel for your job? Not a lot, but I always go to the fashion shows in Paris and New York. And what do you do on the weekend? On Saturday nights, I meet friends for a meal or we go clubbing. Track 26. Interview 2. So what do you do, Isabel? I work for a pharmaceutical company. I'm a research assistant. Can you tell me about your working day? What do you do when you get to work? I'm always at my desk at 7 o'clock. First, I check my email and my diary. Then I have a coffee with my colleagues. Where do you have lunch? I don't stop for lunch. I usually have a sandwich at my desk. How often do you travel for work? I never travel for work. I'm always in the office. What about the weekend? What do you do? I've got two small children, so I like to spend time with them. On Saturday evenings, we sometimes invite friends round for dinner, or we go to the cinema. It depends if we can get a babysitter. Track 27. Interview 3. What do you do, Dan? I'm a sales manager for Africa and Europe. Tell me about your working day. What do you do when you get to the office? First, I have a meeting with my team. Then I check my BlackBerry and reply to important emails. Where do you have lunch? I usually have lunch in the company restaurant. About twice a week, I go out for lunch with visitors. How often do you travel on business? I'm away a lot. I visit the sales office in South Africa three times a year. And I'm in Europe once a month for a week. And what do you do on the weekend? I like quiet weekends. I read a lot and listen to music. On Sunday mornings, I play golf. Unit 2. Work and Leisure. Track 28. Hi, I'm Pat. It's Tim, isn't it? Yes. Hi, Pat. Nice to meet you. What do you do in your job? I manage a web team at an IT company. Ah, yes. And how many hours a week do you work? 
usually between 30 and 35 hours, but sometimes it's a lot more. Yes, it's the same in my job, but I have to travel around quite a lot. Uh-huh. And what do you like best about your job? Well, I work flexible hours, which is great, and I like the people I work with. Do you meet uh, your colleagues after work? Yes, from time to time. We sometimes go for a meal at a nice restaurant near the office. Oh, that's nice. And what do you do in your free time? I love sports. I really like karate and I love playing golf. Hmm. But I'm not really interested in watching sports on TV. I don't enjoy watching professional golf, for example. Hmm. What about you? I like golf too, but I'm also into French cinema and jazz music. I like watching DVDs, and I really enjoy going to concerts. I also like playing the guitar. I'm interested in computer games, but I'm not very good at them. <laughs> <laughs> Unit 2. Work and Leisure. Track 29. I'd like to ask you a few questions about your work. What exactly is your job? I'm a media planner. OK. So, what do you do at work? Well, to put it simply, I decide the media we use for our advertising campaigns. I spend a lot of time each day talking to people in radio, television and the press, as well as with internet companies. We use all kinds of modern media for our advertising campaigns. OK, thank you. Um, what hours do you work? It depends. If we're working on a big advertising campaign, I start at 8 and often don't leave the office much before 9 or 10 in the evening. There's a lot of pressure in my job. I can see that. What about breaks? How long do you have for lunch? Usually, I don't have a break at lunch. I get a sandwich at the local deli and eat it at my desk. I have a proper lunch maybe once or twice twice a month. Hmm, you are busy. So tell me, how do you feel about your job? What do you like about it? There's a lot of variety in my work. I meet lots of interesting people outside the office, and many of my colleagues are also friends. I really enjoy working with them. Right. So what don't you like about the job? <laughs> how long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't like working such long hours without a break. I have a young daughter, and I don't see much of her because I get home so late. I often work on the weekend if we have to plan a really big advertising campaign. So my work-life balance isn't good. Too much work, not enough time for leisure, for fun activities... Not enough time for the family. That's my problem. Unit 3. Problems. Track 30. Person 1. Well, I think the biggest problem is when we have late deliveries. Then there isn't enough stock to sell to customers. We also sometimes get difficult customers who want you to spend a lot of time with them or who want their money back for no reason. Track 31. Person 2. I have big problems with the computer system. It seems to crash once or twice a week. When this happens, it means I can't work. The other big problem is we have a lot of documents, which are sometimes difficult to find. It's a big office, and a lot of documents go missing when people don't return them. Track 32. Person 3. Well, we're always very busy. It's never quiet. I guess the worst problem, apart from that, is people who are rude to you on the phone. People think they can say anything because they can't see you. Sometimes it's difficult to be polite to all the customers. Track 33. Person 4. 
Well, it can be very noisy at times, but for me, that's not a problem. I think it's normal. The worst problem is when the machinery breaks down and we can't work. We have to stop production and call the engineers. The other big problem is when customers want to change their orders. Unit three, problems, track thirty-four. What are typical work problems for you? As a consultant,、uh, I run my own business, and I'm often on my own. But my clients have quite complicated problems that they need to resolve. My biggest problem is having enough time to do a good job with the amount of work I've got to do, and then I also face urgent requests for help when I'm already very busy. Unit three, problems, track thirty-five. What are the biggest problems in companies you know? Most of the companies I work with are big international companies facing complicated situations. Probably the biggest problem they face is the amount of change they have to go through all the time. And they have to go through that change fast, at speed. Secondly, they find it very difficult to plan their needs, and therefore also to plan their resources. In other words, their staff, the equipment, the property, the money they need to satisfy their customers, and. Their customers expect them to reduce their prices, at the same time as these companies have increasing costs. So they have to be much more productive, much more efficient all the time. Unit three, problems, track thirty-six. Can you give an example of a problem you solved? My customers usually ask me to help them solve complicated problems, where lots of people need to be involved in designing the solution. Recently, there was a computer system that had to be introduced that affected millions of customers and their bills. At the last moment, a problem arose. That affected the whole system. I bought the technical team, the business team, the project team, and the suppliers together in one room. And by understanding the whole problem, and by understanding each other's individual problems, we came up with the solution that solved the problem altogether. Unit three, problems, track thirty-seven. Hello, United Food Corporation. Good morning. My name's Marcia Jones, Hove Stores. Good morning. How can I help? I'd like to speak to Harry Palmer, please. Hold on a minute. I'll put you through. Harry Palmer. Hi, Harry. Marcia here. Hi, Marcia. I need some information. Can you give me the name of your new marketing assistant, please? I need to contact him. Certainly. His name's Jeff Hayden. Could you spell his name for me, please? Okay. J E F F H A Y D. O N. <laughs> Sorry, could you repeat that, please? J E F F H A Y D O N. Right. G E F F H A I D O N. No, not G J. J E 
F F, and Hayden has a Y, not an I. H A Y D O N. Right. Okay, I've got that. Thanks very much. No problem. I'll speak to you soon, Harry. Bye. Unit three, problems, track thirty-eight, call one. Hello. Hello, Jackie Singer here. Can I speak to Beverly Simpson, please? Speaking. How can I help you? I've got a problem. I can't meet your boss, Vanessa Gordon, next Wednesday. Something's come up. Okay. I'll pass on your message. I'm sure we can arrange another time. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. Track thirty-nine. Call two. Good morning. This is Michael Benson, PKJ Electronics. Oh, hello, Michael. This is Sheila Clark. What's the problem? It's about the delivery of mobile phones. I want fifty, not fifteen. Sorry about that. I'll deal with it immediately. Good. I need them by the end of the week. Okay. It's no problem. Bye for now. Thanks for your help. Bye. Track forty. Call three. Good morning, Harding Kitchenware. Denise Robbins speaking. Hello, my name is Mike Jackson. I'm phoning about my dishwasher. There are no instructions in the package. Oh dear, sorry to hear that. Which model is it? Hold on, I'll check. It's the PT one o nine five model. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Could you repeat it, please? PT one o nine five model. Got it. I'll send some new instructions right away. Track forty one. Call four. Hello. Hello. David Patterson here, Hudson and Company. Can I speak to Jim Roberts, please? Speaking. There's a problem with the invoice you sent me. Oh, really? Yes. I can't read it very well. The words are not clear. Ah, sorry about that. Also, I think the figures are wrong. I'll look into the matter and send you another invoice. Is that okay? Fine. Thanks very much. Unit three, problems, track forty-two. Guest one. I don't like my bedroom at all. It's really small and dark. There's no light in the ceiling, and one of the table lights is broken. There's a lot of noise outside the window, and I don't have a view of the city. All the walls are grey. And there are no pictures. The gym has no equipment, and the sauna is never open. Track forty-three, guest two. My bedroom's too small. It isn't bright, and the walls are grey. The bathroom isn't well equipped. There's no bath, and the shower doesn't work well. It has internet, but it's so expensive to use, ten dollars an hour. I have an old television in the sitting room. There are no satellite programs, just three or four local ones, so I can't watch TV in the evening. Track forty-four, guest three. I'm not happy with the apartment. The bedrooms too small, and the air conditioning doesn't work. The sitting room doesn't have enough furniture. There is just one old sofa and no desk. I like to swim every day, but the pool's too small, and the water isn't clean. The terrace and garden are nice, but there is no furniture there. 
no tables or chairs. At night, it's very noisy outside the building. Track 45. Guest 4. The apartments look good in the advertisement, but when you get here, everything's different. The beach is about 20 kilometres away, not just a few minutes by car. And there are so many people on it. There's no sand either. I hate that kind of beach, don't you? Working Across Cultures 1. Track 46. Understanding dining habits in different cultures is important if you want to build strong business relationships. The key is preparation. So, before you go to another culture, find out about their dining habits. In this workshop, we are going to look at seven areas that you should research before you travel abroad. I'll start with arrival. Is it important to be punctual, to arrive on time? For example, in Denmark, it's not good to arrive late. But in Italy, you can arrive at dinner up to 30 minutes late. Secondly, seating. Who sits where? Should you wait before sitting down? For example, in Germany, it is good manners to wait until you are shown where to sit. Thirdly, how much to eat. In Norway, Malaysia and Singapore, it is rude to leave food on your plate. But in Egypt and China, leave a little food on your plate to show you are full. Fourthly, what you use to eat. Do you use a knife and fork, chopsticks or hands? In Arab cultures, you should not eat with your left hand. I'll move on to drinking. In some cultures, alcohol is not allowed, and in other countries, such as Korea, Japan and Russia, it is rude or unlucky to pour your own drink. Body language is another important area. Is it bad behaviour to rest your elbows on the table, as it is in Germany? Finally, leaving. In China, it is common to leave soon after your meal. However, in Colombia, it is polite to stay for a while after the meal. We will now look at each of the seven areas in detail. But remember, if you are not sure what to do at the dining table, then do the same as your host or other guests who know the culture. Unit 4 Travel. Track 47. Extract 1. Do you have any duty-free goods? Please open your suitcase. Track 48. Extract 2. This is your pilot speaking. We are now flying at 30,000 feet. Track 49. Extract 3. Passengers for flight GA642 to Rome, please go to gate 26. Track 50. Extract 4. The Hotel Excelsior, please. Track 51. Extract 5. A single ticket to the city centre, please. Track 52. Extract 6. Please fasten your seat belts and switch off any electronic devices. Track 53. Extract 7. The next train leaves from Platform 8. Track 54. Extract 8. Can I have an alarm call at 6 a.m. tomorrow, please? Unit 4. Travel. Track 55. Part 1. Attention all passengers on Platform 1. The next train to arrive is the 1432 to London. 
passengers on platform 2, the next train to Manchester is at 14.40. Track 56, Part 2 Flight BA-125 is now boarding at gate 17. Please go to the gate now. Flight JA-327 is now boarding at gate 23. Please go to the gate now. Last call for all passengers for flight SA-238 at gate 12. The gate closes in five minutes. Track 57, Part 3 Can I check the time of this afternoon's train to Edinburgh? Yes, it leaves at 14.25 from Platform 7. No, sorry, that's wrong. I'm looking at Saturday. It's 14.16 from Platform 5. Track 58, Part 4 Hello, Neptune Travel. Hello. I'd like to book a flight from London to Hamburg on Sunday. Certainly. Let's see. Uh, there are flights at 9.30am and 3.30pm. The 9.30 is best. What time does it arrive? 11.45. That's fine. So that's BA341 from Heathrow Terminal 5. Unit 4. Travel. Track 59. Why do you go on business trips? There are two reasons that I go on business trips. The first is to work with my clients who are based all over the world. At the moment I travel to Amsterdam about every month. The second reason is to visit my colleagues they are based in Singapore and Chicago and I travel to see them about twice a year and in between times I contact them by phone and video conferencing. Which is your favourite business location and why? My favourite location is our Singaporean office and the reason I like that a lot is because it's based in the old town of Singapore and not in the business district. It has a lot of character and it's great to be able to experience Singapore life rather than just the hotels for the business side. Unit 4. Travel. Track 60. What's your favourite way of travelling? My favourite way of travelling is to fly business class. That allows me to go into a business lounge and have a meal before I fly. And then once I'm on the plane, I have a seat that turns into a bed. And that's great for getting sleep before I arrive at the other end. Do you like to stay in the same hotels? Yes, I do. I travel a lot and it's great when I go back to a hotel and they recognise me, they know my name and they know what I like to do in the hotel. And there's one particular favourite in Amsterdam that I go to where they remember what my favourite drink is. Unit 4. Travel. Track 61. Paul Robinson speaking. Oh, hello, Paul. This is Judith Price here. Hi, Judith. Paul, I'm calling about that meeting. Can you make next Wednesday? I'm sorry, Judith, I can't. But I can make Thursday or Friday. Well, I can't do Thursday, but Friday is OK. OK, Friday it is. Can we meet in the morning, say, 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock's fine. Oh, and can I bring my colleague, Sabrina? You met her at the conference. Of course. I can pick you up from the station if you like. Great. See you on Friday. Bye.
Unit 4. Travel. Track 62. Hello, Capri Hotel. How can I help you? Hello. I'd like to book a room from Monday the 10th to Wednesday the 12th of this month. Right. Let me check. Yes, we have some rooms then. Do you want a single room or a double room? Single, please. With a bath or a shower? A bath, please. Fine. How much is it per night? 120 euros. Okay. So that's a single room with a bath for two nights, and you're arriving on the 10th and leaving on the 12th? Yes, that's right. What time do you think you'll arrive? About 6 p.m. That's fine. Can I take your credit card details, please? Unit 4. Travel. Track 63. Gustav Conference Center. Hello, it's Jill Diamond here from Juicy Designs. Hi, Jill. How can I help? Well, we want to have more members of staff at our conference. We'd like to have another 30 employees. Is that okay? Mm, I'm not sure, really. So, you want 65 people at the conference, not 35? That's right. Mm, can I call you back? I'll talk to my colleagues and let you know. Okay. Please do your best for us. Thanks. Goodbye. Unit 5. Food and Entertaining. Track 64. Would you like a starter? Yes, please. What do you recommend? Well, the escargot, the snails in garlic butter, are very tasty. And the tomato soup is very good here. I'd like the tomato soup. Great. And I think I'll have the snails. What would you like for your main course? Can you help me with the menu? What's paella? It's Spanish. It's a kind of rice dish. It's made with seafood. That sounds nice. I'll have that. Right. I think I'll have the spaghetti. Shall we order dessert later? Well, how about some dessert? Actually, I've eaten too much. I'm full. I think I'll just have a coffee. OK. And I'll have the apple pie. Unit 5. Food and Entertaining. Track 65. Would you like a starter? I'd like the soup, please. What do you recommend for the main course? You should try the roast duck. It's delicious. Would you like a dessert? No, thanks. I'm full. Right. I'll get the bill. Thanks very much. That was a lovely meal. I really enjoyed it. Unit 5. Food and Entertaining. Track 66. How do you entertain business contacts? I like to get to know my contacts. I give them a chance to tell me about themselves and what's important to them, what they need. So I take them places that we can talk. Perhaps a coffee, lunch. If I know them well, I take them for dinner. Places that we can spend time with each other. What's your favourite entertainment? Recently I met a client at their office and we walked across a park together and while we walked we talked. We had a cup of tea at the other side of the park and then walked back together. Spent the time talking about what was really important. I really enjoyed it and I think they did too. Unit 5. Food and Entertaining. Track 67. Is a meal in a restaurant the best way to entertain business contacts? A meal is a good way to entertain contacts. It gives you the chance to talk to them and to find out about them. I am careful about the noise level and about how private it is. 
but I enjoy it. Can you give an example of a mistake made when entertaining clients? I say don't take out a client you don't like. Don't waste the time. Don't take a client to a restaurant where they can't eat the food. So if they're vegetarian, don't take them to a steak restaurant. Don't spend too much money. Don't make it too expensive. That might embarrass them. Unit 5. Food and Entertaining. Track 68. You have to plan a meal for a mixed group of nationalities. What would you do? I get to know what they can eat and what they can't eat and what they like from them personally. I ask them. I don't assume. I then plan it carefully. But I also relax so that they can relax and enjoy it. Unit 5. Food and Entertaining. Track 69. How can we entertain our visitors next week? What do you think? We could show them the castle. Mm, I don't know about that. I think we need something more interesting for them to do. Yes, I agree. I also think it's too far away. Why don't we invite them for dinner? Good idea. Which restaurant do you recommend? The food is always good at Pierre's. That's right. But it's usually very busy. We could try the new restaurant at the Grand Hotel. It's very popular. Yes, that's right, but it's very expensive. How about a restaurant by the river? Yes, that's a great idea. There's a good Italian restaurant there. I think I have a menu in my office. Some of the dishes are fantastic and everyone loves the atmosphere. Shall I book a table there for eight people for Wednesday night? Yes, please. Can you call the restaurant as soon as possible? Make it for 7.30? Right. We need to check with Jane Sterling, the head of marketing. It's important she comes as well. Yes. OK. Unit 6. Buying and Selling. Track 70. Speaker 1. I buy a lot of books on the internet. I often look at them in the bookshop, but then buy online. It's much cheaper, and they arrive very quickly. It's great. I guess I buy a book every two weeks, perhaps more. Track 71. Speaker 2. I love the January sales. I buy things like electrical goods, because the discounts and special offers are so good. You can get some real bargains, especially in the big department stores. I go every year. Track 72. Speaker 3. I buy my music and movies online. I just download them. It's so easy and convenient. I usually buy something every week. I probably spend too much because it's so easy. Unit 6. Buying and Selling. Track 73. Hello. Can I speak to Alex Dodd, please? Speaking. This is Carl Simpson. Ah, yes, Mr. Simpson. You asked us for a price for some TX-7s. Yes, that's right. Before I place an order, I have some questions. Sure, go ahead. Well, firstly, do you give a guarantee? Yes, it's two years on all our models. OK. And um, what about a deposit? Well, we ask for a 15% deposit on large orders, that's more than 50 units. Yes, that's no problem. And do you have the goods in stock? Yes, we always have goods in stock, and we always deliver on time. 
OK, I think that's everything. I'd like to compare prices with Emerson's, but I'll contact you again this afternoon. Unit 6. Buying and Selling. Track 74. 1. Saved. Delivered. 2. Launched. Worked. 3. Decided. Visited. Unit 6. Buying and Selling. Track 75. Started. Finished. Advised. Lived. Wanted. Opened. Missed. Booked. Invited. Unit 6. Buying and Selling. Track 76. What advice would you give to new sales staff? My advice would be, be patient. Take time to build relationships with the people that you want to sell to and the sales will come. It is also, of course, important to make sure that you fully understand and are knowledgeable about the product or service that you're selling. What mistakes do salespeople often make? I think one of the biggest mistakes that salespeople make is to try to sell something to a customer that the customer does not actually need or want. It is much better to take time to understand what the customer wants. With that knowledge, a salesperson can find the reasons that the customer may have to buy the product or service. And anyway, customers like to be listened to, not to be talked at. Unit 6. Buying and Selling. Track 77. What qualities do you need to be a successful buyer? To be a successful buyer, I think, requires a lot of preparation. It's about working out the maximum price that you are prepared to pay. It's about contacting several different suppliers, asking for a, a written quotation of the cost and services and products that are being offered. And it's also about being prepared to look at ways of getting additional extras perhaps or some discount for ordering a higher volume of the product for example and finally it's important to be prepared to walk away from the purchase if you're not happy with what is being offered. Unit 6 Buying and Selling Track 78 What's the best thing you have bought? I think the best thing I ever bought was a house. This was about eight years ago. The house had some extra land around it and the seller was asking for a very high price. I put in a much, much lower offer, which was not accepted. But over a period of 18 months, with lots of different negotiations and some patience on my part, I was prepared to wait for that time. Eventually, I bought the house 
at a much lower price than had originally been asked for. Unit 6. Buying and Selling. Track 79. So, tell me a little about Mikhail Olsen's early life. Well, he was born on December the 27th in 1957, in a town in the south of Sweden. He studied industrial design and marketing at Linköping University. That was in the late 70s. What about his career in IKEA? Well, Mr Olsen got his first job in 1979. He worked as a carpet salesman in the IKEA store in Linköping. Two years later, in 1981, he became the manager of a store in Sundsvall. Olsen moved up the career ladder quickly with management jobs in training and marketing. When did he get his first international experience? He got a job in Belgium in 1988. He was the country manager there. In 1991, the company moved him to Canada for another four years. In 1995, he returned to Sweden as managing director, a job he did for five years. Mr Olsen's next big job was regional manager for Southern Europe and North America. And then, on September the 1st, 2009, IKEA named him as chief executive, a position he still has today. Unit 6. Buying and Selling. Track 80. Hi everyone. I'm Carol, and this is the new cachet bag from Tina Fashions. It's stylish and fashionable. It's for smart, professional women. It's made of soft material. It's very easy to clean and take care of. It's got a special feature on the inside of the bag. I'm sure you all love the extra pocket at the front. It's really useful. It's got a padded handle and a wide shoulder strap for easy carrying. As you can see, you can close it easily. Just zip it up. Take a look inside. There's plenty of space, isn't there? It's got lots of pockets and a special compartment to keep things safely. It's got a big compartment in the centre and one at the back, so it's very roomy. But it's lightweight. It's much lighter than most bags. It weighs about half a kilo when empty. And it's just 35 centimetres long. It comes in three colours, black, blue and brown. It's a great bag for all seasons. You can carry it all day long. It's just 75 euros. Order now and we'll deliver within a week. Postage and packaging, five euros extra. Unit 6. Buying and Selling. Track 81. Let's talk about new products, Jim. Do you remember last year we bought that electronic tennis game from Sportsline? It was a great product. It brought a lot of people into our stores. Yeah, it was one of our best buys. I seem to remember our sales increased a lot after it went on sale in November. Hmm. I want to do the same thing this November. Buy a really exciting product, advertise it on television, and get plenty of customers into our stores. Good idea. Are you thinking of a new sports game? Well, maybe. But any toy that's exciting and will get people into our stores... Something we can sell at a high price and make a good profit on. Any ideas? Mm, okay, if it's a new sports product, how about skateboards? Mm. Skateboarding's very popular with young people and the market's growing fast. They'll pay a lot for a skateboard that's a bit different. Yeah, good idea. Okay... What about other new toys? Uh, something big and expensive. Maybe something children can try out when they visit our stores. Hmm. There are a lot of toys to choose from. There's a new robot coming on the market soon. I saw it at a toy fair and liked it. Another company had a space toy on show. There was a lot of interest in it, too. Both products might be good ones for us. 
They're radio-controlled. Children love radio-controlled toys. You can charge a high price for them. Okay, Jim. Let's find out more about the products. Then we can discuss which one to order. We don't have enough cash to buy all of them, so we'll have to make a choice. Working Across Cultures 2, Track 82 When you meet an American for the first time in a business situation, it's usual to shake hands. You should use a fairly firm handshake. Keep good eye contact when you talk to Americans. It shows that you are interested in what they're saying, and it's a sign of respect. Personal space is important to them. They like to keep a distance of about two to three feet between them and the person they're talking to. Americans tend to speak in a direct, informal manner. They like to get to the point quickly. This can be surprising for people who have a more indirect style of communication. If you go to a meeting, arrive on time, or even a few minutes earlier, Americans value punctuality. There probably won't be much small talk at the start of the meeting. Agendas for meetings are common and usually followed carefully. Most Americans want to use first names as quickly as possible after meeting business people from other cultures. There are no special rules about giving and receiving business cards. Many Americans fold or write on a card, but this doesn't mean they don't respect you. Working Across Cultures 2, Track 83 So, Gail, what did you learn while you were in Shanghai? Well, quite a few things. For example, each day when you meet Chinese colleagues at work, you shake hands. You also shake hands at the end of the day. They often nod their head as well. What about their way of communicating? They don't like saying no to you. If a Chinese person says no, it can make the other person feel uncomfortable. The other person loses face, and that's not good. So, instead of saying no, they'll say maybe, or we'll see, or perhaps. But that's really their way of saying no. So they express themselves more indirectly. Yes. The Chinese often express themselves more by body language rather than by words. You have to watch their body language, their facial expressions, their gestures to work out what they really mean. Okay. Interesting. What about other differences? There are plenty. When you talk to Chinese business people, it's best to use their title, such as Mr., Mrs., or Miss, followed by their surname. I always used their last name and their title. For example, I'd say, Good morning, Chief Engineer Zhang. And what about business cards? You present your business card with both hands. One side must be in Chinese, and that's the side you show to your Chinese contact. What about meetings? Okay. The important things are to be on time and to know who the most senior person is. It's usually the oldest person in the room. You mustn't interrupt people in meetings or talk over them. It's important to show respect at all times so your Chinese colleagues never lose face. Unit 7. People. Track 1. What kind of people do you like to work with? I like working with all kinds of people. In particular, I like working with people who are hardworking and most of all people who are reliable. That is, those that do what they say they are going to do and on time. But I also like working with creative people, people who are willing to find new ways to solve problems. And I don't like people who give up too easily. Unit 7. People. Track 2. 
Can you tell us about a bad manager you worked with? Yes, I have worked with some bad managers. I can think of one manager who often criticised members of her team in front of others. And this meant that her team members hid information from her. It also meant that they were not prepared to take any risks because they knew that if something went wrong, then she would not support them. Unit 7. People. Track 3. Can you give an example of a really good manager? Well, luckily, I have met and worked with several good managers. And these are people who are willing to delegate. That is, they will give a task to a team member to get on and complete. They are less involved in how a task is done, but they are clear about setting the objective and being clear about what results they expect. And a good manager will also give praise and feedback to a team member when they do a good job. Unit 7. People. Track 4. So how did you like the job? The work was interesting, but there was too much to do. The deadlines for the projects weren't realistic. Everybody had to work very long hours. Most people didn't leave the office until 8pm and we worked a lot of weekends. Who was your manager? Sophie Turner. She was a really nice person and she knew a lot about the business, but nothing went smoothly. She wasn't a good manager. What was the problem? Meetings didn't start on time and they went on for hours. But the real problem was motivation. She didn't know how to motivate the staff. Everyone was very unhappy. Luckily, she left. Unit 7. People. Track 5. 1. Where was Steve Jobs born? 2. Who did Jobs start Apple with? 3. When did Apple introduce the famous Macintosh computer? 4. Why did Jobs leave Apple? 5. What did Pixar specialise in? 6. Who did Jobs marry? 7. How much did Apple pay for Next? 8. When did Steve Jobs resign as CEO of Apple? 9. How old was Steve Jobs when he died? 10. Who is Apple's new CEO? 11. How many people does Apple employ worldwide? Unit 7. People. Track 6. 1. Where was Steve Jobs born? In California. 2. Who did Jobs start Apple with? He started it with his friend, Steve Wozniak. 3. When did Apple introduce the famous Macintosh computer? In 1984. 4. Why did Jobs leave Apple? Because of disagreements with the CEO, John Scully. 5. What did Pixar specialize in? It specialized in computer animation. 6. Who did Jobs marry? He married Loreen. 7. 
How much did Apple pay for Next? Four hundred million dollars. Eight. When did Steve Jobs resign as CEO of Apple? He resigned in August 2011. Nine. How old was Steve Jobs when he died? He was 56. Ten. Who is Apple's new CEO? Tim Cook. Eleven. How many people does Apple employ worldwide? More than forty-six thousand five hundred. Unit seven, people, track seven. I'd really like to attend this evening course in Spanish, Hannah. It's important for me. I get calls every day from our suppliers in Colombia and Argentina. Sometimes it's difficult to understand what they are saying. I need to know more Spanish for my job, but I don't have enough money to pay for the classes. Look, <clears throat> I'm really sorry, Julian. The problem is, we don't have enough money. To pay for language courses, it's a difficult time for us at the moment. We have to cut costs, and if we pay for your course, everyone will want to go on a course. Okay, I understand the problem. Perhaps you could give me a little money towards the cost of the course. It would help me a lot. I'm sorry, Julian. It's just not possible. Why don't you buy one of those self-study courses in Spanish? They're cheap, and you can improve your Spanish a lot if you study hard. I think you should visit the shopping centre. There's a special promotion at the moment for self-study language courses. Really?、Mm. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> Will the company pay for a self-study course if I buy one? I can't promise anything, Julian, but bring the receipt to me, and I'll see what I can do for you. Okay, thanks a lot. Unit Seven, People, Track Eight. Good morning. My name's Matthew. I'd like to tell you about a problem I have at work. It's about our project manager. I work in customer relations for a medical insurance company. We're a small team. We help customers if they have problems, but our project manager is no good at all. He makes mistakes all the time, and then customers get angry with us. Some of them even shout at us on the phone. There's a part of our website which is for employees at a big multinational company. If one of the employees wants to contact us, they can phone us, and we deal with the problem. Well, our project manager didn't put the right phone number on the website. He put the number of someone living in our town. Of course, this person was really angry when she received so many calls. She phoned us every day to complain, and I had to deal with her phone calls. I don't know what to do about this problem. Unit Eight, Advertising, Track Nine. Six thousand three hundred. Seventy-five thousand eight hundred and seven. Eight hundred and twenty-three thousand one hundred and twenty. One million two hundred and fifty-five thousand five hundred. Ten point five percent. Unit Eight, Advertising, Track Ten. Last year, we had a market share of ten point three percent. We increased our advertising budget by thirteen percent for the launch of Sparkle Light. 
We sold over eight hundred and fifty thousand units of Sparkle, our most popular product. The new advertising campaign cost nine hundred thousand euros. Next year, we want to increase our market share to eleven point five percent, and sell over two million one hundred thousand units of Sparkle. Unit eight. Advertising, track eleven, one. Smaller, two. Faster, three. Slower, four. Higher, five. Worse, six. Better. Seven. More competitive. Eight. More efficient. Nine. More interesting. Unit eight, advertising, track twelve. An advert I really don't like. Is one for a snack product of potato crisps. It's about a man choosing whether he loves the potato crisps more than his partner or not. I think this is completely unrealistic, and it also goes on for a long time. Unit eight, advertising, track thirteen. What makes an advert really effective? I think what makes it effective is for it to be very memorable, that you remember a key message or the main product in it. One that I particularly like at the moment is the Honda Cars advert, which uses pictures of flowers and the countryside to give a very modern message about the engine and the cars. Unit eight, advertising, track fourteen. Are there some things that you should not use in adverts? Yes, I think that adverts shouldn't use claims or promises that don't seem to be delivered at home. I'm thinking particularly about cleaning products, which claim to remove stains, but they don't do it when I try them at home. Unit eight, advertising, track fifteen. Sorry, Stephen, I don't agree with you. It's not the right time to spend money on a big advertising campaign. I think we need to target rich people, famous people, pop stars, and also people who plan expensive weddings. What do you think, Nikki? Yeah, you're right. They're the people to aim at, and they have plenty of money. Actually, we could do it pretty cheaply, you know. Oh, you think so? Yes. In my opinion, we can use a different way of advertising. I think we should use sites like Facebook and Twitter to advertise our flowers. We could get a lot of business that way. How do you feel about that, Stephen? Well, yes. Why not use those sites? I really like the idea. We could reach a lot of consumers on Facebook. Okay, Nikki's come up with a great idea. How about starting with the Facebook page, and we'll see if we get any interest. Okay, fine. Unit eight, advertising, track sixteen. Did you watch TV last night, Tracy? There was a commercial for Palmer and Mason's new chocolate bar. Yeah, I saw it. I thought it was really good. I liked it a lot too. It was a great idea to use the film star Veronica Pond, and they chose some interesting places for her to advertise the product.
I think we saw her in five different countries, so it was a really international advertising campaign. Hmm, and probably very expensive. Mm. I think they're also using a lot of billboard advertising. I saw two huge ads on my way to work this morning. Well, one thing's for sure, they'll have a big campaign. They're a much bigger company than us. Mm. They have more money to spend, so they'll probably use all the media. Yes, money's certainly not a problem for them. But we can do a good launch if we plan it well. Choosing the right agency will be really important. We need one that's good value for money. I agree. Good value for money and also creative. Mm. Well, we're looking at three at the moment, so we'll have to choose one of them pretty soon. Unit 9. Companies. Track 17. Tell us about your favourite company. My favourite company is a private healthcare insurance company. I really like the leaders. They're decent people who really look after the people that work for the company. And they care about their customers and want to meet their customers' needs. They also care about the environment. What I particularly like is that all the people that work for the company work for the company because they believe they're helping people when they most need it. Unit 9. Companies. Track 18. Which company would you like to work for and why? I don't know the name of the company I want to work for, but the company I want to work for has a big purpose. It wants to change things for people in the world for the better. So a company perhaps that will produce green energy or affordable housing for the poorest people in the world or ways of feeding people who can't currently be fed. What do the best companies have in common? I think the one thing they have in common is strong leadership. These are leaders who really want to look after the people that work for the company. They want those people to work at their best. They care about their customers and they understand the customers' needs and they focus the company's resources on meeting those needs. They also look after the environment and the sustainability of the world around them. And they're ethical and legal. Unit 9. Companies. Track 19. Which company will do well in the future? I don't know which company is going to do well in the future. But Rolls-Royce is famous for the quality of its leadership. Apple is famous for its innovation and creativity. And Google invests a lot of time in inventing new products for its customers. Fairtrade is renowned for looking after people in the world. And the UK company Body Shop is renowned for being environmentally friendly. And I think the company that does well in the future will bring those elements together. Unit 9. Companies. Track 20. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Robert Ford. I'd like to talk about our new marketing strategy. There are three parts to my presentation. Firstly, the background to the strategy. Secondly, how we want to change our current operations. Finally, the details of the costs and the effect of the change on staff. By the end of my presentation, you will understand clearly our future plans. If you don't mind, let's leave questions to the end. Unit 9. Companies. Track 21. Good morning, everyone. My name's Nikki Hunter. I'm a director of a medium-sized coffee chain, Fiesta Time. I'm going to talk about our company and its plans for the future. My presentation is in three sections. 
Firstly, I'll say a few words about our company. Secondly, I'll describe my duties. And finally, I'll talk about our plans for the future. Fiesta Times head office is in Chicago, and our flagship store is in New York. We own more than 200 stores across the country. Our outlets sell coffee, coffee drinks, and pastries. Most of our coffee beans come from Brazil. We have 3,000 employees, and our turnover is approximately 50 million U.S. dollars. Our profit is about 12.2 million. Our main competitors are Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, and of course, McDonald's. I'm responsible for new business. My job is to help the company grow and to hire and supervise managers for our new outlets. We're expanding fast. Next year, we plan to open at least 10 new stores on the West Coast. We'll start by opening a store in San Francisco, and after that, uh, we'll expand. Working Across Cultures 3, Track 22 I heard there were some problems with the sales trip. What happened? I tried to arrange a business meeting with our clients in Toulouse in the first week of August, mm -hmm. but most people were on holiday. Also, the headquarters are in Paris, so I didn't see a senior manager. When did you make the appointment? Two days in advance. That wasn't a good idea. So, how did the meeting go? Well, we had lunch first. Quite a long lunch, actually. And the person I met, Pierre Dubois, uh -huh. was very friendly. In fact, he didn't seem to want to talk about business. You know me, I like to get down to business straight away so as not to waste time. Mm. Anyway, at the end of the meeting, he asked me a bit about myself. I told him I didn't go to university, but I was proud of being a successful businessman. After that, he was very quiet. Working Across Cultures 3, Track 23, Speaker 1 my business trip to St. Petersburg was a complete disaster. I only arranged two meetings in advance, and one of those was cancelled at short notice. Unfortunately, I went in the first week of May, when there were some public holidays. Anyway, my advice to anyone going to Russia is make appointments as far in advance as possible. Confirm your meetings as soon as you arrive in Russia. And avoid meetings in the first week of May. Track 24. Speaker 2. I had a very successful trip to Kazan. Before the trip, I did a lot of preparation and research. I planned a lot of time for socialising and getting to know people before any business was discussed. I printed out all my documentation in both English and Russian. I gave a detailed presentation on our products and was able to answer all the technical questions they asked me. Track 25, Speaker 3 I think my business trip to Moscow was OK. I spent a lot of time trying to build up relationships, because in Russia, relationships are very important. However, I wasted a lot of time trying to get decisions from junior managers. Next time, I'll go straight to senior managers. One other thing is that Russians sometimes like to think in silence before they answer a question. Next time, I'll allow them enough time to answer. Working Across Cultures 3, Track 26 I'm going to begin by telling you about my first business trip to Bogota 15 years ago. The client I met was very generous, and he invited me to his home for a meal. I didn't want to be rude, so I arrived on time. I brought some gifts for his wife and daughter and wrapped them carefully. They didn't open their presents, 
so I asked them to. I also asked if they liked the presents. They said they did. When dinner was served, I toasted my new friend and his family. The conversation was about culture, soccer, history, and literature, and seemed to go well. At the end of the evening, he offered me some coffee. Unfortunately, I don't like coffee, so I said no. Unit 10. Communication. Track 27. Do you use social networking sites? I use LinkedIn, which is a professional networking site, and I'm connected to just over a hundred people that way. I know some people who are connected to more than 500 people in that way. I also use a couple of specialist professional networking sites for knowledge sharing and for sharing expertise about some very specialist topics. Unit 10 Communication. Track 28. What are the business advantages and disadvantages of social networking? The main advantage for me, I think, has been being able to keep in touch with many more people in my professional field than I otherwise would be able to. I think also there have been been times when I have made contact with people who are interested in the work that I do. The disadvantage can be that other people make contact with me who are trying to sell me something that perhaps I'm not interested in. Unit 10. Communication. Track 29. Who is the best communicator you know? The best communicator, I think, is my ex-boss from about 15 years ago. And why was he good at communicating? He always had a real passion for his subject. Whatever he was talking about, he was enthusiastic. He made sure that he knew his subject very well and the one thing that made a big difference I think is that when he spoke to an audience he made that audience feel as if they were very important. Unit 10 Communication Track 30 which ways of business communication do you like or not like? Face-to-face -face communication is, I think, the best for getting information across and for getting things done in business. I also like email and other forms of electronic communication. They are good for making many more people aware of what is going on. The thing I dislike the most is the corporate newsletter or company magazine. The corporate magazine is always one way. It's about the message the company wants to get across and is often not that interesting for an employee. Unit 10. Communication. Track 31. What are you going to do next year, Janine? I'm going to change my job. That's the big decision. I'm going to look for a part-time job so I have more time for my family. Hmm. And I'm going to do a course, too. I'm not sure what to study, but maybe something in computer graphics. Computer graphics. I think that's a good area to get into. <laughs> And what about a summer holiday? Any ideas? I think we're going to stay at home. Oh. I need to save money for my course. We may go camping for a week or two.
What about you, Patrick? What are your plans? Well, I'm not going to change my job, but I am going to move to a new flat. Move to a new flat? Yes, I'm fed up with all the commuting. Most days it takes me nearly two hours to get to work,、mm. so I'm going to move somewhere nearer to work. Sounds like a good idea. Any other plans?、Mm. I need to get fitter, so I'm going <laughs> to do more sport, and I'm going to sell my car and buy a motorbike. I've always wanted a motorbike. Unit ten, communication, track thirty-two, call one. Hello, it's Jamie here. We need to meet next week. What's a good day for you? I can make Wednesday. How about ten o'clock? That's okay for me. Great. See you on Wednesday at ten o'clock then. Track thirty-three. Call two. Okay. Let's meet one day next week. What day is good for you? I can do Monday or Tuesday afternoon. Sorry, I can't make Monday or Tuesday. How about later in the week? Is Friday okay? Yes, I can do Friday morning after eleven. Yes, that's fine for me. Friday at eleven thirty. See you then. Okay. Bye. Bye. Track thirty-four. Call three. Hello, it's Leslie here. Sorry, but I need to change the time of our meeting. I can't make it on Monday now. Oh. How about Tuesday? At the same time? Yes, that's fine for me. See you on Tuesday at ten o'clock. Track thirty-five. Call four. Hello, this is a message for Jean. I'm very sorry I missed our meeting this afternoon. My flight was delayed. I'll call you again later. By the way, it's Dan here from Chicago. Unit Ten, Communication, Track Thirty Six. I think there are several ways to do this. We've got eight departments in the company. We could simply reduce each department by ten workers, and then we can hope the other twenty employees will want to leave for various reasons. Well, that's certainly one way. Another way, of course, would be the last-in, first-out system. We ask employees who joined the company recently to leave. For example, everyone who joined us during the last year. Yeah, a lot of companies do that. They think it's fair, but I'm not so sure. Well, there's a third way. We choose workers who are not essential to the company. We could ask department heads to decide which workers they don't really need anymore. It's quite a good way, really. You cut costs, but you don't reduce your profits. So, which way do you think we should use? Whatever way we choose, it will be important to help those who are leaving as much as possible.、Mm, I agree. We need to give them a lot of advice and help so they can move on in their lives. And we need to communicate very clearly to all our staff why we're taking this action. Absolutely. Unit Eleven, Cultures, Track Thirty Seven. I was in Yemen in the Middle East, and I was invited to a colleague's house for dinner. There was a long silence during the meal. I felt uncomfortable. I saw a beautiful table and said, "What a lovely table!" My host laughed and said, "Oh, then please take it." I said, "Oh no, I can't take it." My host offered it to me three times. It was very embarrassing for us both. 
Unit 11. Cultures. Track 38. My friend Peter joined a French company recently. He made a mistake and used first names rather than family names. The staff were not happy about this. It is always best to be formal at first in France, especially when you start a new job. Peter's last company was an American company. People were more relaxed there, and they always used first names. Unit 11. Cultures. Track 39. I was in Osaka in Japan, and we went out for a meal with our Japanese sales staff. There were lots of bottles on the table, and after a while, I poured my own drink. I didn't wait for somebody to pour my drink, and I forgot to pour drinks for the others. The Japanese staff looked a bit embarrassed and started laughing. Unit 11. Cultures. Track 40. Can you give an example of a cultural mistake in business? Yes, I think mistakes can come from differences in styles of communication, uh, which might be true for some different cultures. I have an example of working with a Dutch colleague who sent me an email saying, I don't like the design, change it, which came across to me as very abrupt and a bit rude whereas actually he was just meaning to be very clear in what he wanted to happen. And once we had a conversation about that, I was able to change it in the way that he wanted. Unit 11. Cultures. Track 41. I have made a mistake. I was working with people in East Africa and they had urgent problems to solve. When I was working with them, I rushed the work. I got straight on to the business. And what I learned was that it's rude to start work on the business in East Africa before you have asked each other how you are and what's been going on in your lives. And so when I did the work, I found it hard to get on with it until I'd given them that space to do it. Unit 11. Cultures. Track 42. It's easy to make cultural mistakes working internationally. I usually write quite long emails. I leave the important part of the message until the end. And that normally comes after perhaps some funny comments. It took me some time to learn that people in other countries find that confusing. They don't understand that I am not being direct. They are confused by the humour. And what I am trying to say then often gets ignored. Unit 11 Cultures. Track 43. 1. Could I have a map of the city, please? Yes. Here you are. 2. Could you recommend a good restaurant, please? Yes. There's a very good Italian restaurant near here. It's in Seymour Street. 3. Could you say that again, please? Yes. Seymour Street. I'll show you where it is on the map. 4. Could you copy this document for me, please? I'm sorry, I can't. The office is closed in the evening, but I can do it for you tomorrow morning. 5. Could I have my bill, please? Yes, I'll just print it for you. 6. Could you call me a taxi, please? No problem. Where do you want to go? Unit 11. Cultures. Track 44. 
So, Tom, things aren't going very well with you and Paul. What exactly is the problem? Well, we don't have a very good relationship. That's it, really. I don't think I can work with him. Why not? Well, it's not just me. I think the whole team feels the same. You see, Paul's not very good at communicating. Or maybe I should say, he communicates in the wrong way. He doesn't like face-to-face -face meetings. But that's the way we solve most of our problems here. He spends most of his time sending emails to all of us. He's very formal, too formal for this country. I suppose it's because of the culture he comes from. What about our customers? Does he get on well with them? Well, how can I put it? They respect him. He's got a lot of knowledge. But they don't really like him. Our customers like to meet us in the evening and get to know us socially. Paul doesn't join in. He's always too busy when a customer invites us for a meal. Maybe that's why the rest of the team doesn't get on well with him. They all enjoy meeting after work and having a good time together. Paul's just not interested in that sort of thing. Mm, it's a pity. Socializing is important over here. You know, we sent Paul out here to help you. But it isn't working, is it? Your relationship, I mean. No, it isn't. What's the solution then? What should we do? Well, I think the best thing to do is for me to have a talk with him. I'll give him some good advice. That's a good idea. After that, I think you should talk to the team. Explain what Paul's role is. People don't seem to understand what he's doing here. Unit 11. Cultures. Track 45. I really want to change things in the branch office, Stuart. I'd like our style to be more relaxed and friendly, just like it is at head office. That's the kind of image to show to our customers. It would get us a lot more business. Mm, sorry, Kate. I can't agree with you. Why not? Uh, what's the problem? You see, the staff at the branch office don't want to change things. They've been with us for years, and they're quite happy with the way things are. Maybe, but we do need to change our style. We need a more modern image. I feel strongly about that. I want to meet some of the senior staff as soon as possible to explain why we need to change. Well, good luck. I can see you're against changing things, Stuart, but perhaps some of the staff will have a different opinion. Maybe. OK, let's set up a senior staff meeting for next week. You can present your proposals for change. We'll see how people feel about them. Right. I'll make the arrangements and let you know when the meeting will be. Unit 12. Jobs. Track 46. How many jobs have you had since leaving university? I've worked for six companies. Why have you changed jobs so often? I wanted to get experience of sales in different industries. What have you done that shows leadership? Well, I lead the sales team. I'm also chairperson of a local business association. In what ways has your job changed since you joined the company? I now have more responsibility and I plan the sales strategy for the team. Have you ever worked with a difficult person? Well, the boss in my last company wasn't very easy to work with. Unit 12. Jobs. Track 47. What would be your ideal job? 
I'm very fortunate because I think my current job is my ideal job. And I know a lot of people wouldn't be able to say that. I lead a management consultancy of 35 consultants and I enjoy working with all my colleagues. We do very interesting work with a variety of clients. And although we work very long hours, it's very rewarding and we have a good laugh as well. Tell us about a job you didn't like. Thankfully, that was one that I had over 20 years ago. And the reason I didn't like it was because I didn't think the company treated people very well. It didn't involve them or get the best out of them. And I also didn't get on well with my manager. Fortunately, I only stayed there a couple of years. Unit 12. Jobs. Track 48. What are your strengths and weaknesses? I think my strengths come from my work as a consultant over the last 20 years. I understand how organisations work through looking at their leadership, their culture and their business strategy. And I'm able to bring that understanding to my new, new projects with new clients. I think my main weakness is that I can see a situation from many different sides. And sometimes that makes it hard to make decisions. Unit 12. Jobs. Track 49. What advice would you give to young people starting work? I think there are three main things I'd say to them. One would be take the opportunities that you're given and really learn as much as you can from them. The second would be to really listen to those around you and pay attention to what they're saying. And the third would be to build relationships across the organisation because that's really going to be helpful to getting the work done. What's the best question to ask in a job interview? When you go for a job interview I think it's a good idea to ask a question that demonstrates you're really interested in the company and that perhaps you've done some research into the organisation. I'm particularly interested in culture, so perhaps you could ask a question about the company culture. What's it like to work around here? Or what are the pluses and minuses in the job that you're expecting to do? Unit 12. Jobs. Track 50. Why do you want this job? First of all, I like meeting people and getting people to work together as a team. And then I like traveling and using my languages. I really want to work for this organization. It has an excellent reputation. Do you have any special skills? I'm fluent in German and French. I get on well with people. I'm also good at managing people and getting them to achieve results together. I love organizing events for clients, and I think I'm very good at that. What did you learn from your last job? I improved my marketing skills and learned to work well in a team. And what mistakes have you made? Well, I'm not really patient with people who don't meet deadlines. Well, what kind of people do you work well with? As a team leader, I have to work with all kinds of people, but the people I like best are those who work hard and are reliable. What are your interests? I have lots of different interests. As I said before, I like traveling and discovering new cultures. I also like aerobics and skiing. <laughs> what about the future? Where do you want to be in 10 years' time? 
I want to be working in an international company as its marketing manager. Hmm. Do you have any questions for us? If I get the job, when would you like me to start? Unit 12. Jobs. Track 51. Let's talk about the new people we want to employ, Marsha. What kind of candidates are we looking for? Starting with personal qualities, we want people who will share our values, people who are honest, open, and reliable. I also think they should be sociable and friendly, you know, the sort of people you like to work with. It'll be very useful, too, if they have qualities as future leaders. If they can show that, it'll be a big advantage for them. So, what about skills and abilities? Well, I think we should hire people who are good organizers and also good at teamwork. They're very important skills. That's true. It'll be an advantage, too, if candidates can analyze and solve problems. And they'll need to know how to use our main IT systems. What about language skills? Well, they should know at least one other language. At least one. A lot of them could be working overseas, so they'll certainly need to be able to learn a foreign language. Okay. Previous experience. I think we agreed earlier that they should have at least three years commercial or industrial experience, right? Yes, that was the minimum. We also agreed there'll be no age limit, but we think most candidates will be in the 25 to 35 age group. Yes, I don't expect them to be older than that. Okay, I think that's about it. Yes, but there is one other thing. We should ask them about their interests. We don't want to hire someone who has no interests outside work. Fine. It should be interesting. Let's hope so. You never know what a candidate will tell you at an interview. Working Across Cultures 4, Track 52 in the case of team working, researchers have found that there are some cultural attitudes that are similar for the majority of people from Indonesia, Japan, South Korea, Malaysia, Singapore and China. These are societies that usually like working in groups. People in these societies are often happier working towards team goals rather than individual targets. They are naturally good team players, and it's not always necessary to spend a lot of time on team-building training sessions. The individual is not as important as the group, and arguments should be avoided. Team leaders must avoid situations where team members might lose face or lose respect. Working Across Cultures 4, Track 53 It's difficult to find common attitudes towards team working in all European countries. It's easier to find similarities in some southern European countries, say Portugal, Italy, Greece and Spain, and then in some northern European countries. Here, I will discuss Denmark, Norway and Sweden first, and then mention Finland at the end. Southern European teams can often be individuals working on their own and reporting to a strong leader. Team leaders need to give a clear focus and direction for each team member. Many Scandinavians like working in teams, and this means that Danes, Norwegians and Swedes are good team players. However, a team leader who gives orders all the time to junior members is not likely to succeed. Once team members are given a task, they want the freedom to complete it without too much control. It's also important that information is shared widely across the group. Finland, however, is different. 
as Finns often prefer to work on their own. Copyright Pearson Education Limited 2012